For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance programs, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Discipline and rigor in your internal controls. Today, New York Times columnist David Brooks' thoughts on building and maintaining order inform today's lessons on internal controls. In the area of internal controls, I believe it is incumbent to consider not only the obvious risk areas for your internal controls, but also the universe of potential transactions within the operations of your company. Once again, relying on internal controls expert Joe Howe, the executive vice president at Workiva on the need for rigor in your internal control protocols and how adherence to that rigor can increase operationalization around some types of internal controls a company should consider, including gifts, travel, business courtesies, and entertainment. One area that companies need to be mindful of is corporate checks and wire transfers in response to falsified supporting documentation, such as check requests, purchase orders, or vendor invoices. The delegation of authority is critical, a critical internal control. So, for example, a wire transfer of X between company bank accounts in the United States might require the approval of the finance manager at the initiating location and one officer. However, a wire transfer to, of X dollars to the company's bank account in Nigeria could require approval from a multitude or multiple of uh, provers, including the finance manager, a knowledgeable person in the compliance function, and at least one corporate officer. The key is that the delegation of authority should specify who must give the final approval for each expense. Slush funds are the situation where cash or checks drawn on local banks, bank accounts in locations outside the United States are located in off-the-book, off-books bank accounts. Petty cash disbursements in locations outside the U.S. have unique control issues. Some petty cash funds outside the U.S. have small balances, but substantial throughput of transactions. Your delegation of authority should address replenishment of petty cash funds in countries outside the U.S., as well as approval of expense reports for employees who work outside the U.S., including those who travel from the U.S. to work outside the U.S. Another area for concern is travel, the reason being <clears throat> that a company's corporate travel department and independent travel agencies can buy tickets, hotel rooms for non-employees. Internal controls might be needed to ensure that policies are enforced for travel for non-employees uh, when purchased through a corporate travel department or an independent travel agency. As was demonstrated in the GlaxoSmithKline corruption enforcement action in China, a company must not discount the risk related to the abuse of power internally in collusion with independent travel agencies. You should implement procedures to ensure compliance with your company policies regarding payment of travel and related expenses for third parties for not only visits to manufacturing or job sites, but also any compliance restrictions that might be in place. An area for fraud, corruption, and corporate abuse has long been procurement cards or P-cards. If your company uses procurement cards, assume these to be a very high-risk area, not just for FCPA, but for fraud generally. Banks have made a great selling job for corporations for the use of procurement cards to help facilitate cash management, but more often than not, they can be simply streamlined, a simply streamlined way to allow embezzlement and misbehavior to go undetected. Here, a control objective should be put in place along the lines of a written policy and procedures defining the acceptable and unacceptable use of procurement cards, required forms, required approvals, and documentation, including review requirements. An interesting analogy that Hal used is a step faster than the bear. If This is the theory that 
you do not have to have a home which would allow you full protection if you're attacked by a bear. You simply have to have a stronger one than your neighbor because uh, the bear will attack the weakest link. And this means if the pre-approval process or strong controls over expense reports uh, prevent misbehavior, misbehavior, employees who wish to misbehave will seek other ways to do it where the controls are not so strong. This means you must use your risk assessment process to help prioritize where controls are most needed. If your company prohibits gifts or other travel other than for the submitted employee from being included in the expense report, you should consider requiring instead a check request form be used, which would be subject to stringent controls. In such cases, a checklist could be completed and attached to the check request, which included questions and disclosures designed to flush out what exactly was provided in the way of a business class airline, pocket money, event tickets, or other indicia of a valid or indeed invalid trip. Such internal controls would allow for a more streamlined process of expense reports and still elevate the gifts and travel items to the appropriate level of review and appropriate level of documentation. One question I am asked often is why does a company need internal controls in place regarding gifts, travel, and entertainment where their internal audits of expense reports are common? It is important to keep in mind that with respect to gifts, travel, and entertainment, internal audits most often constitute, at best, a detect control, which only gives comfort for some historical period on a retrospective look back and is not necessarily a representative of the controls in place to prevent future violations. So it is a false sense of security for a compliance officer to rely on an internal audit of expense reports to be a control needed over GTE policies. So how does this all tie into uh, New York Times columnist David Brooks? Well, in a piece David Brooks wrote, building and maintaining order requires toughness of mind and rigor and discipline to properly serve your own work. I think this translates uh, into the compliance world and certainly the world of internal controls that by having the rigor to institute and enforce the types of internal controls that have been identified herein, you can go a long way towards detecting and more importantly preventing a compliance violation from occurring. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, the first one really deals uh, directly with the title of this piece, and that's you must maintain rigor and discipline around your internal controls. Once you put the internal controls in place, you cannot have them circumvented. You cannot have senior management walk around them. You must uh, emphasize to employees that if they want expense reimbursements, they're going to have to fill out the form and have the form side signed and have all information. Number two, never forget that controls against fraud can also help you prevent corruption. And finally, number three, is your house stronger than your neighbors to prevent that attack from the bear? Think about that in terms of your employees and internal controls. Enjoyed this episode of One Month to Better Internal Controls. If you've listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate this podcast as it would help in our rankings. Get the word out about the only one month podcast series, which enables you to design, implement, and enhance a better compliance program. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Once again, thanks to our sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, for sponsoring this month's series. This production of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.